Welcome to EJH British Cars, and today we're going to do something a bit different. Um, wife had a flat on her Cadillac XT5, so we're going to use my new Harbor Freight tire changer to put a new tire on. So I have to admit, I've never changed a tire on this tire changer yet. It's all manual. I've changed literally thousands of tires in my lifetime, but always on a Coates 1010 or a 2020. Those things are freaking ancient history now, but... Um, and plenty by hand, just with a couple of tire irons. But we're gonna give it a whirl, see how it goes. So this is the tire changer, and as you can see, I've mounted it onto my uh, pad. You can also see the birds like to sit on it and do their duty, but so is, is it is. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna break down, this is a bead breaker down here. So we're gonna put the tire in there and see how the beads break. Oh, I threw a rag on top of it just so it wouldn't scratch up her wheel and I had to adjust this is a really wide rim so I had to adjust it to the outside edge I've let the air out of the tire now I guess we get to see if this will work that was not helpful See, one of the problems when she gets her car washed, they uh, they put shiny stuff on the tires, and that is very slippery. So I'm going to adjust that down one notch, see if that'll work any better. Now, we are not having much luck here. That's still no go. I'll try it on the smallest one. Well, that's not working very well. So, I have an old-fashioned bead breaker. Let's try that. So this is my old-fashioned bead breaker, and I had to actually put a, a board underneath it, otherwise it was just picking the front up, and it just barely fits in this. Now, I bought this bead breaker probably about 1992, so it's pretty old, but, There we go. It may be old, but it still works. These are freaking monster tires, I gotta tell you. They're 235, 65, 18. And the rolling diameter is like as big as the back tires on my truck, which are 31 fives. There we go. Next, we need to put it on here. Oh, 
that's got that on there. This did not come with the machine. This is just a, a wheel spacer, but I want to put it on there just to help protect the wheel. That goes on there. That tightens up like this. And we need to put some tire lube on. Well, some tire lube. That's just following me around. So I think we need a tire iron. Alright, so I'm going to put a tire iron on here. I really need to get a bit more lube on this thing. Like that's got it. So I'm going to check to make sure that the wheel's clean so that it'll seal up against it. This is really kind of important, particularly if you have steel wheels, you can get rust here and the beads will never seal. This is an aluminum wheel, so I don't have that kind of problems. Now, if we'll put the new tire on, I'll lube up the beads. And this does not seem to be a directional tire. Started here, make sure well, first side just pushed on, so that was easy enough. Well, that was better.
No, it was a struggle. I could not get the beads to set on that rim. And I tried and tried for probably an hour. So the next day I took the assembly, the wheel and the tire back to where I bought the tires and they put it on their inflation station and caught the beads in about three seconds flat, <laughs> just kind of frustrating. So what do I think about this tire changer? Well, you know, I paid about under $50 for it and a brand new nice uh, tire changer is thousands. So, you know, you got to keep that in mind. So it was easier than changing wheels, tires by hand with a couple of flat irons on the ground, particularly as older. Uh, it's a little harder to be quite as bent over like that and pulling away. I did put it together. Uh, there was a little bit of a learning curve with it for me. Um, certainly next time would be easier. Those wheels were 18 by they're probably about eight inches on the inside measure, measure eight and a half on the outside but it's a thicker uh, edge because it's an aluminum wheel not a steel wheel so that was pretty big uh, as you saw even with my old style bead breaker i had to uh, put a board across the bottom to keep the bottom stable um, so it struggled with something that big and of course the wheel is a front wheel drive so it's got a lot of offset that the the inner plane of where the wheel bolts onto the rotor assembly is probably six inches in so that didn't make life any easier um, as you saw when i went to use the long bar to take the um, the beads off the old tire it wanted to hit the face of the mag and I had to hold it up at a pretty steep angle. Not that that couldn't be worked around, it's just something to think about. So, I would say that if you have a modern SUV with really big wheels, you're going to struggle with this and you're going to struggle, no fault of the tire changer, but trying to get the, the beads to get that initial seal so that the tire will inflate uh, with the large wheels and the short sidewalls and the sidewalls are pretty stiff there's just you know you can push the tire down on the rim and try to get the bottom to to stick with some friction and then lift up and of course all the bead loop you use worked against you and all that but i just kept on getting and almost get it high enough you know on that last quarter of an inch the bottom bead to break off it was pretty frustrating and again that has nothing to do with the tire changer uh, I'm looking forward to, I've got some Triumph wheels that are 15 by four and a half or five and there's steel wheels and not to worry about scratching them or anything and I'm thinking it will probably work with them quite well. Um, so overall for the money it's hard to beat it. Um, I certainly would not, I've seen some guys they, they bolt these things down on pallets and stuff like that. Um, and I suppose it's something you can do if you don't have a spot where you can permanently mount your tire changer. But I would definitely recommend bolting it down to a piece of concrete because having that thing really stable makes a big difference. Uh, you know, you're going to, as you pull on that bar, you're trying to rotate that whole assembly. So if you, you would have to be sort of trying to stand on the pallet and you're standing on the edge because the wheel took up the center and it's wood, you know. Again, you could do it, you could work around it, you could, you know, fill in the slots on the pallet and all that, but it's just better to bolt it down. So, uh, and considering that I bought that tire changer on a store grand opening sale, and I don't even think I paid 35 bucks for it, uh, it's hard to complain. Uh, is it the best tire changer in the world? No. That certainly, you know, I used to use Coats 1010s and 2020s because it's been that long since I worked in a tire shop. And, uh, you know, I would love to have one of those, but I don't have the space to put something like that and have it be inside because um, there are plenty of those for sale out there. So for, you know, $50 or less, not a bad deal. Um, we checked 
they wanted about 30 bucks a wheel to mount and balance. Um, so I certainly saved that money because uh, I also have a spin balancer here. Maybe I should do a video on that. It's a snap-on and it's a modern computer balancer. It spins the wheel, has a digital readout and all that stuff. It's really nice, but it's for small shops. So you have to spin the wheel by hand instead of having a motor, which, you know, I, I balance a dozen tires a year and that's just, I'm happy to do that. It's not, not any kind of a deal to me, but if I was doing 100 tires a day, I probably would feel differently. So anyway, my review. I, I give it six, I mean, cons construction quality and all that, and it seemed plenty strong. Uh, same guys are bought inexpensive ones and having to weld bits on them to keep them twisting. I didn't have any trouble with that at all. Um, you know, it's got a bead breaker, which I think that my biggest fault with it, that one of the legs on the base is longer to put the stop, because for the bead breaker, you need something for the inside of the rim to push against. And that is also where they put the mounting bolt. So that mounting bolt is right underneath the rim of the tire. So if you got a nice rim, you're going to muck it up. So it would have been a lot better if they had moved the hole to the other side. Why they didn't do that, if I had thought about it when I bought it, I would have just drilled the hole and put the bolt there. And I may drill another hole and put a bolt there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, if you're just doing old beat up steel wheel wheels, it doesn't really matter. But if you're working on anything nice, um, I got to admit that I like my old school uh, bead breaker better than one that you saw on the video. Um, just seems to work better. I like the fact that, you know, that the shoe on it's about 10 inches wide, whereas the one on the Harbor Freight is only probably about four inches. So by being wider, it really pushed that piece down. Whereas with the Harbor Freight one, it's pushing in a thin area. So you got to kind of like push it, turn the wheel, push it, turn the wheel on wheels that are sticky. So anyway, uh, certainly don't regret buying it. The price was right. Uh, Seems sturdy enough, which has been the biggest complaint I've seen from other people. There are all these deep videos about putting gussets in and all that. Um, just as happy to have it for the money. Um, like I said, I look forward to using something on a bit more conventional size because, like I say, those those tires are huge. They I have 31 five inch diameter tires in the back of my pickup truck, and they're about the same diameter as the wheels on my wife's SUV. So. They are massive. You get them off the car and they're just, the tread area must be nine to 10 inches wide. And of course they're 31 inches tall or so. So anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, please like, subscribe and comment and we'll see you next time.